Well, welcome to this Tuesday morning on All Things Apostolic. We had a great time yesterday. We were talking about the rapture. We want to talk about it today also. But um, I gave a little report about No Limits yesterday, but I didn't give a report about church on Sunday. So Sunday morning, um, it was the time change. And so at the Rock Church, there were a lot of people that came in late that apparently didn't get there. <laughs> that didn't get the message. Um, and so it was just kind of one of those services, you know, where you're loving God. It's low key. It's uh, you're there. You're, you're worshiping. You're doing what you know you need to do. You brought your kids to church. And um, it's just kind of rambling along. Pastor preached. And at the end of the service, um, some people came to the altar to pray. It was like uh, no lightning struck or, or no thunder rolled, except maybe outside because the weather was bad. But um, <clears throat> so some people prayed at the altar and finally people kind of dismissed themselves and went home. But there was a couple that was still praying at the altar, a precious new couple, brand new couple, man and wife. And um, they just kept praying and some people was praying with them. And in a little bit, they had their hands up worshiping God, and God filled them with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Then, uh, when no one expected it, somebody said they wanted to get baptized. And then another one and another one decided they wanted to get baptized. Those three got baptized, and then uh, it appeared that it was over, and another one wanted to get baptized. So... It ended up uh, a, a couple got the Holy Ghost, received the Holy Ghost, and four people got baptized, and uh, brand new people um, uh, have at least one child, and just uh, thrilled to find the power of Jesus Christ that the rest of us have found. So you never know, and this is one of the things Brother Young and I talked about is that, and one of the things that we talk about in the Rock Church is that you never know. There are no throwaway services. There are no services where you can say, oh, this is just a wash. Let's just get out of here. Never. Because you never know when God's going to do something special. And so you discipline yourself to always remember that. And you say, we're going to worship God. We're going to, if it just seems like we're going through the routine, we're going through the routine. And uh, <clears throat> if it seems like the preaching is nothing particularly special on a particularly uh, dry Sunday morning, just keep on preaching because you never know what's going to take place. And so these wonderful people found Jesus Christ, born of the Spirit, <clears throat> excuse me, and others born of the water. So uh, thank God. Thank God for that. So now let me just for a moment talk about the fact of um, about the rapture. This is a, I'm not quite sure why th this is such a subject of, of controversy that uh, many people uh, I just, there's, I guess, a lot of stuff out there to read, and maybe we'll get to some of that stuff at some point sometime. But, uh, and so people get in all kinds of ideas about the rapture that it's some people that there's not even going to be a rapture. Well, the scriptures that we've already read yesterday pretty well point out if that's not the rapture, I'd like to know what it is. <laughs> Amen. And then other people think that um, uh, the day of the Lord, which probably we haven't explained good enough. Maybe I can spend a little time on that today. Uh, the day of the Lord uh, is going to come, which is a day of judgment. And it's it, that that has to come first before the people of God, the church, can be raptured or caught up uh, or caught away or snatched up is the Greek. Caught away would be the, uh, the Latin and snatched would be the Greek. They're, they're pulled out here, but snatched is like it goes along with what he said in 1 Corinthians uh, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, boom. It's going to just be an instantaneous thing. So a lot of people don't think that that can happen until after the people of God have gone through the tribulation. Or some people say until they go through half the tribulation, then they may be raptured. Um, other people 
confuse the rapture with the second coming of the Lord, uh, which is when he comes with all of his saints. How can he come with all of his saints if they haven't already been raptured up to heaven? But anyway, um, he comes with all of his saints to set up uh, his earthly kingdom, which has been prophesied um, how many times? Many times in the Old Testament and also in the New Testament. And Jesus affirms this in places that the kingdom will be set up. Like Acts 1 6, he says to the disciples, uh, we're not, I'm not telling you today what is, when that's going to be. That's not what this is about. But you're going to receive the Holy Spirit and you're going to receive power and you're going to be witnesses unto me. Um, but nevertheless, he acknowledges that there is a kingdom that's going to be set up. He prays this. He tells us to pray this. He said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So that's the ultimate goal. Uh, that's the divine purpose, the, the, the design of God that, um, that that kingdom will be set up. Uh, but the rapture is not the same thing as the second coming. And um, the second coming is even the Old Testament anticipates that there is a coming of the Messiah. But the New Testament lets us know that he's coming, for example, where every eye shall see him. But Thessalonians that we read yesterday tells us that he is coming as a thief in the night at the rapture. Every eye is not going to see him, and it's going to be in the, in the blinking of an eye, actually just in, the, uh, in, a, in a nanosecond. He will come and catch his people away. Uh, let me just, let's just read real quick again. I know it's a little lengthy reading, but let's just read real quick again. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 28. We're going to put up on the screen here so that you can see it while I'm reading it to you. He says, but I would not have you uh, to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. That's people that have already died, that were saved. The Bible talks about that in, in, as being in sleep. Uh, that ye sorrow not for those that have already died, even as others which have no hope. In other words, sinners, when they die, they have no hope. But, but we have hope. And if you have loved ones that have died in the faith, there's hope. And he says, this, he's explaining that hope. He says, for if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which uh, sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Now the Lord's revealing this to him. That's an important little statement right there. This we say to you by the word of the Lord. This isn't Paul making this up. And this is not something that has been already told earlier in Scripture or in the Old Testament, okay? He is saying this by the word of the Lord because he is the one that has received the revelation. He says this himself in the New Testament that this revelation was given to him about the church. So he knows these things. He is disseminating these things. Now, you know that he taught these regularly. He taught this all over the place because he says almost the same words to the church in Corinth that he's saying to the church in Thessalonica. And, and so you, you, you're aware that if he, if he repeated that, I mean, as small as the New Testament is, if he repeated that twice to two different churches, you know that he was teaching these things to every church out there and, uh, and that they were basic things. And so he received this from the word of the Lord. What did he receive? Let's read on. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord should not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord, and he's telling how the Lord is coming for the church. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And then he says, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So when he says comfort one another with these words, he is, uh, uh, he is letting us know that the coming of the Lord here is not something that is dreadful for the church. It's something that is the greatest comfort, the greatest hope we could possibly have. 
And what happens here is this reveals uh, the sequence of events and, and how they're going to take place, that the dead in Christ shall rise first, and uh, then when we which are alive and remain, uh, we will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Now again, that's something the Old Testament never talks about. That's something that's never even remotely mentioned in the Old Testament. But it is given by Paul, by revelation, to the church that this is going to take place in the New Testament. When he talked about the dead in Christ shall rise, then we, which are alive and remain. Now, that means Paul includes himself as thinking he might be alive when this takes place. And so he certainly believed in the imminent return of the Lord. The reason I point that out is there's people that do not believe the rapture can take place until certain other prophetic events precede them, uh, and then it can take place. But the Apostle Paul didn't think that. He's thinking, he's thinking this could happen during my time, during my day. There's not a bunch of other stuff that has to happen over the next 2,000 years before this can take place. He, he's saying it could happen anytime. So where did Paul get this information about the Lord preparing a place for us? Well, he probably got this information about the destination of the saints from John 14, 1 through 3, which is where Jesus is, um, is talking to his disciples and gives them comfort. He says in John 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many nations. If it were not so, I would have told you, notice this, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. And when I come again, I will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So, so Paul lets us know in both Corinthians that we saw yesterday and Thessalonians that the church um, in Thessalonica particularly, they were experiencing persecution and some of them had lost their lives. Uh, they were in mourning, and they were they were distressed because they thought these people are uh, they died. They're not going to they're not going to be here at the coming of the Lord. So Paul's comforting them. This is not a letter of correction or rebuke, but it's a letter of comfort. And Paul clarifies that he had already in the past taught them about events to come, and therefore he would not spend time talking about. And he uses this interesting, very interesting phrase in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 1. He says, so he says, you, you already know this stuff. You and I have talked about this before. So he said, I'm not going to be talking about the, this is the phrase, about the times and seasons. Why wasn't he going to talk about it? Because they'd already been taught that. He said, in fact, this is his words in 5 and 1. He said, ye yourselves know and then he goes ahead. He, interestingly, that phrase, times and seasons, is exactly the phrase that Jesus used in Acts 1-6 when talking to the disciples. And they asked him, said, is this the time? Uh, they equated the time of the coming of the Holy Spirit upon Israel. They equated that with the establishment of the new kingdom that was going to come on earth. They didn't, they didn't know. They were just taking what they had from the Old Testament. And so Jesus, they said, is this the time? Because you're telling me the Holy Spirit's going to fall upon us and is going to be giving. And so they thought of the setting up of his kingdom when he talked about the Holy Spirit coming upon them. But he says to them, this discussion is not about the, and then he uses that phrase, times and seasons of things to come. Now, Paul before has already talked to the people about the times and seasons. So what's the difference? Why could Paul talk about it, but Jesus say this is not the time to talk about it? Well, it's because in Acts 1 and 6, that was before the birth of the church. They would not even have understood what he's talking about, being resurrected by the Spirit within them. They didn't even have the Spirit. These things were breaking events that had never been, uh, never occurred before. And so... Uh, the, the disciples, uh, because there were certain things that here before Pentecost that had not yet been revealed to them, they certainly didn't need a revelation about uh, the rapture. They wouldn't even have understood it. But now the, those people had received the Spirit, and so Paul is able to take them to the next step. And what Paul tells us in this Thessalonian passage is 
really profound information that's found nowhere else in the Old Testament. And so these, all, these Thessalonians had already been taught these things about the future, and they knew uh, what the day of the Lord was and how it was going to come. All right, well, maybe we ought to spend a little time talking about the day of the Lord. Let's do it tomorrow. Thank you for being with us. Don't miss tomorrow.